Hello everyone, my name is David Muse and I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to talk about a little device that I purchased from Micromark uh, a little over a year and a half ago when I first started building my model railroad, the Washington Terminal Company. Uh, upon the suggestion of my brother Fletcher, who is a model railroader also, uh, I looked into what's called a resistant soldering unit and he said you should really take a look at this real good because you're going to be laying a lot of track you're going to be doing a lot of uh, track feeders and stuff like that drops so you might want to look into this instead of using a regular standard soldering iron I had never really known much about an RSU or resistant soldering unit uh, some years back I always wondered uh, guys that did custom painting on brass how they dealt with handrails and I figured they just got a uh, desolderer and a soldering iron and went to town on it. Uh, come to find out that's not how they did it. They used an RSU. It's a lot quicker, a lot cleaner, and the solder flows actually a lot better on it. Uh, when I first got it, it took me probably a day to, well, really, let's be honest, two days to sit around just playing with this thing uh, to see how it works. Uh, see how it goes together using the different settings on the uh, in, it, it's not complicated at all uh, but learning how not to burn up and melt ties in the process of putting feeders on so it's actually been uh, really a lifesaver and a time saver at the same time it allows me to put a lot of feeders on to a section and the modules that I do are eight feet long uh, three of them are 33 inches wide. This one that you see right here is only 20 inches wide. It has one, two, three, four, five, six tracks on it and goes into a Y. But there are five switches on it, six switches, seven switches, I'm sorry, and uh, eight feet worth of track in that. And that's a lot of feeders because I put uh, drops on my switches uh, at four points so it's uh, continuously... Uh, electrified all the way through. I use Pico on there and this has worked out real well. This is code 83 here and in the background that's code 100. Um, so real quick let me explain to you and what I'd like to do here is two things. First I'd like to show you the unit uh, and then I'll uh, stop the camera, reset it and come back and do a little quick uh, soldering maybe technique tutorial maybe thing I'm not a great teacher uh, by any means so uh, bear with me for just a moment here and uh, let's jump into it so what we have here is the uh, business end well one of the business ends as I call it looks like a, st a standard soldering iron uh, difference is it has a lead coming off the back and a uh, And we have this little piece. Alligator clip on one end, same receptacle on the other end. Uh, dual purpose here. Uh, it's both heat sink and it's one of the conductors that comes off of this unit, which is the main power source for the RSU. Um, I'll give you this word of caution right now, right up front. You're really going to want to want, want one of these. This tip acts just like an exacto tip. The difference being this tip here, uh, the actual point of contact, is I can't quite tell what it is. It's not a solid metal. It's more like some kind of car densely packed carbon. And uh, if you try and press hard like you normally do with a soldering iron sometimes, because we know that's kind of hefty, you will break this right where it meets here. Now when you get these in the uh, in the package with the rest of the unit, you get seven of these that come in a little plastic package, so be careful when you're unpacking this thing that you don't break them. You don't want to break them in half or wind up crumbling in them or smashing them or something like that. Um, so I broke this one some time back, but there was still enough where I could move it a little bit down in the shaft, and believe it or not, there was actually uh, a quarter inch more on top of this at one time but it eventually burns down and you just replace it very easy to replace this is a very very simple uh, mechanism and 
really, like I said, fantastic to use. Uh, showing you the other clip. This clips onto the rail. And once you clip it onto the rail, then you just take the tip and apply it to the other side. Uh, as a heat sink also, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> as a heat sink also, I like to use uh, a couple of cotton swabs dipped in some cool water. And I put those on each side of where I'm actually soldering. Uh, on both sides of the rail that helps dissipate some more of that heat out of the rail quickly and you know try to keep the uh, ties from being deformed in any way it comes with a foot switch this goes in between your power source and the uh, unit here and then there's the power unit itself uh, it has as you can see three different posts on it for three different positions. This side here is called the clip lead and they allow you to choose one, a high and a low. So in my testing things I obviously went for high first and learned a valuable lesson. Uh, burns like the sun and quickly melted ties and believe me I was not on the uh, I was I just had the solder on a uh, piece of wire trying to put on the side of a piece of track there just test track and <laughs> let's say there was a little bit of smoke more than I expected so I moved it over to the low lead uh, that works just fine but you still have to be cautious because it gets hot quick it only takes literally just like two seconds for this thing to heat that solder up and then start moving along especially when you put flux in it and then there's the handpiece. Um, you put the handpiece on this side, always goes on this side, and you're off and running. That's it. That's what came in the box minus the uh, seven tips. Um, I should say also that in the saving of time of doing a lot of feeders and bus wire and all of that, because I use suitcase clips on the uh, from the buses to the actual feeders that come up to track side but I knew I was going to have to do a lot of soldering on this track I did not solder the rails together though I'm not doing continuous rail the reason being is that my layout room is actually outdoors it's in my backyard. The modules break apart. I bring them in the house during winter or in climate weather so that they don't get ruined. Um, so it saved me a lot of time. And in all honesty, what would normally take, let's say, about, I would have to estimate six hours to do one of these modules without going crazy if I just, you know, button down and I don't do things real fast but you know at a medium pace uh, it took me roughly two hours and that's putting the feeders in bending them cutting them putting them down in the web of the rail and then once everything's down I make sure everything's right I come back boom and I start with the RSU unit so I'm gonna stop right here I think I've talked enough I would like to stop and now set up so I can give you a quick demonstration of how this thing actually works. And uh, while I'm doing that, why don't you take a moment and go online and just check one of these out. There's some other videos there, uh, and I'll be honest, they're shot better than mine. Uh, and they give you a real idea of what this thing can do, but I'd like to do a little demo for you also. All right, everybody, uh, I set up a little demonstration for the RSU, uh, and uh, please, uh, I apologize for the video beforehand. Uh, I should be ashamed of myself, but uh, it's a cell phone. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a smartphone. So, uh, with that said, I'll do the best I can, and hopefully you can see this. So what I did was I dropped a feeder down in there. You can see the feeder right there. Uh, what I usually do uh, when I do this is I take some alcohol, clean the feeder and the web of the rail, and then uh, once that dries out, take some flux, put some flux in there, 
and go to town soldering. Um, it's your choice what kind of uh, solder and all that you use. You can use any kind of solder with this. Uh, I'm using one with uh, flux already in it, but I like to put a little extra on the rail to just help it spread out some. And um, very simple, what I do is just take the solder, put right in the web right there. Take the tip. And I actually don't put it on the rail a lot of times because that feeder is making contact with the rail. So give it a few seconds, boom, it's locked in. Now I'm going to reach under the layout and just pull that, work it, twist it, move it, jiggle it, do all kind of stuff to it and it's not going anywhere didn't use a lot of solder took just a few seconds and i don't know if you can really see it maybe you can stop your computer and enlarge this frame somehow uh, but you'll see that there is no distortion of the rail i'm sorry of the ties so like i was saying before it's uh, a very effective tool uh, i enjoy using it actually and Kind of, I, I work in television and radio and film as an audio tech and from time to time have to do repairs on equipment and cables and stuff so uh, soldering for the job is one thing but soldering for a model railroad layout, ooh, that's the bee's knees there. Uh, so I thank you very much for watching this but before I go I would just like to say a very big thank you to Tom of Tom's Trains and Things. I've been watching his videos, and I should have mentioned this at the top, and uh, he's doing a series on soldering, and, and I'm sorry, not on just soldering, but also on model railroading for beginners, and I've been watching that series. I, I learned some things. Uh, this is my first layout, and watching that has been a thrill, plus Tom's he's a funny guy. I like Tom. Actually, I like everybody in the model railroading community that I've subscribed to. Uh, please subscribe to Tom. Please watch his videos. Check out his blogs. Great guy. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the gentleman's name that was doing the soldering uh, segment on his video, Model Railroaders for Beginners. Uh, but that I've watched his videos also. Very nice gentleman and love the work he does also. And I deeply apologize for not remembering your name, sir. So I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, maybe we'll meet somewhere and we can share uh, a bottle of water or juice. All right. Well, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, take care. Uh, enjoy this and uh, have a good evening. So as you can see after that, you wind up with this nice, clean, soldered joint works on a lot of different uh, applications too uh, but like I said be cautious with it read the instructions and definitely watch some more videos I think I don't I honestly I probably watched about 10 videos on RSUs just to get a real feel of what this thing is like before I go I the reason I'm doing this is because of someone that I subscribe to who I have a well I have a great deal of respect for everyone let's just say that right off the bat everyone that I've subscribed to and that I haven't subscribed to yet and I've watched their videos you folks are really doing some really great stuff and that's where I got a lot of inspiration and ideas for my model railroad uh, Tom of Tom's trains and things had started a series not too long ago uh, actually I think it was uh, the beginning of January he started it uh, model railroading for beginners and I started watching that series that he started doing and I tell you it has helped me out a lot um, he has explained some things that I didn't know or didn't quite understand at that point in time made me do a little bit more research and I thank you for that Tom that's what I love about this hobby is how we gain knowledge and share things with each other. Uh, he was doing uh, model railroaders for model railroading for beginners, and 
he did one on soldering. I'm, I apologize, I don't remember the gentleman's name that was uh, featured doing that, but I have seen his videos also, and I'm sure I'm, I'm pretty sure I subscribed to him. If I hadn't yet, I, I will after this video. But uh, he's done some really, really, really good work that I like watching and learning from also. And that's what inspired me to ask Tom about, well, you know, I see a lot of folks using tra traditional soldering irons. Why not an RSU? And I kind of took it as a challenge. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. So please, when you get a chance, check out uh, Tom's Trains and Things. And I can't pronounce your last name properly, so I won't even try it. But definitely subscribe to him. Watch his videos. And um, share Please share. Uh, that's why I did this video, and I will have some others on little items that I pick up along, along the way and share with you. I thank you very much for your time and watching this. Take very good care, and uh, happy railroading.